All right, everybody, welcome to our next lesson here, continuing to talk about teenagers uh, and lifespan development. Today, we're going to look at teenagers and gender roles. So our objectives and standards are to explain gender roles and their impact on teenagers and analyze the difference between gender roles and gender stereotypes. And please take a look at the uh, object objectives and standards. And our desired result, remember to include this in your weekly summary. Uh, how do gender roles and gender identity affect teenagers? All right, so an introduction. So gender influences how an individual walks, dresses, moves, and plays. Um, it also influences how people think and others' thoughts about you. Um, and there are differences between gender role and gender identity. A person's biological and physical makeup as male or female is gender identity. So again, it's what you're born, whether you're born a boy or a girl, is your gender identity. Um, there are also inherited traits. The inherited traits of boys or girls are gender roles. Um, so again, you know, boys typically, you know, uh, we have certain characteristics like uh, boys playing with army men or, you know, or trucks. Um, and then girls playing with baby dolls or, you know, stuffed animals and things like that. Um, these are inherited traits, and children from a very young age will recognize their roles as males or females. Again, so boys may, you know, want to work with tools or, you know, work with their father uh, when his father's working in the garage or another male is working in the garage. Um, and the female, the girl child, may, you know, follow her mother a little bit more, you know. If the mom's taking care of a younger sibling, like we said, you know, in other lessons, the girl may play with a baby doll or, you know, or change the baby doll's diaper and things like that. So teenagers and gender role. Gender roles include a person's genetic makeup partially, but focus mostly on the culture and society they live in. Um, it represents what a society or culture respects of that person in terms of behavior. So again, talking about the United States, uh, men in the United States are viewed typically as dominant, uh, emotionally reserved, they don't really show their emotions, um, and competitive. Women are viewed uh, typically in the United States as cooperative, uh, emotionally responsive, so they may show their emotions more, and submissive. Again, these may not be your opinion of uh, men or women, they're not necessarily my opinion either, um, but these are the typical um, opinion of men and women. Now, teenagers today have a broader view of behavior for men and women. So changing roles. The roles of males and females differ from society to society. Uh, for example, anthropologists, those who study culture and things like that, have found that some societies reverse the roles of males and females in America. So maybe the female is more um, dominant and the male may be more submissive, uh, things like that. Um, or others assign the traditional American roles to men and women, such as the ones we have here. And roles can also change in society, such as they have in the U.S. and Canada today. So, you know, 100 years ago, the role of men and women was very different from what the role of men and women today is. Rigid ways. Gender roles can become so rigid that they become gender stereotypes. And again, these are oversimplified or prejudiced opinions or beliefs about the way women or men should behave. And many of these views can be traced back in history to a time when division of labor was necessary for survival. So the man was seen as the one who went out and hunted and uh, things like that. And the woman would stay home and take care of the, the house or the hut or whatever the case may be. Um, so again, we can trace some of those ways back to that time. Now today, women are free from their traditional roles thanks te to technology. Um, we know obviously women are more involved in various occupations and also medical advances such as birth control have allowed women to kind of break free of that traditional role. And men and women typically today share gender responsibilities of raising children. Um, you know, again, years ago, many times it was seen that the woman would take care of, you know, the child and, you know, the male would go to work, come home, and it was more of the female's job to take care of the child, feed the child, bathe the child. Um, all those things. But today, those roles are kind of, uh, men and women typically share those responsibilities. And labor divisions for men and women have also changed again. So 
um, the females are no longer just secretaries or you know um, you know nurses you know they're not they're not held to certain you know, certain positions in the workforce um, you know women can be CEOs and bosses of companies and become professors and things like that they're not just held back to certain positions and same for men as well now we have male nurses uh, we have male secretaries men who work as secretaries in office business so again those labor divisions that used to separate men and women have changed So accepting roles. Psychologist Sandra Beam uh, argued that people should accept new androgynous or blended roles. And she did a study. She asked college students how desirable certain characteristics of men and women were. And some of the male traits they identified were for men, uh, independence, ambition, self-reliance. So again, being able to take care of yourself and assertiveness. For females, the traits identified were uh, females should be gentle, they should be affectionate, they should be sensitive, and they should be understanding. Beam then put the uh, characteristics and others in a questionnaire called the Beam Sex Inventory. And she asked participants to rate the traits how they apply to them from one to seven. So she said, you know, how does this treat, you know, caring or things like that? To how does that compare to you as a woman or a man? You know, one to seven, one being uh, least likely, seven being the most likely. And one early report from 1975 involved uh, 1,500 results from Stanford undergraduates. Now, 50% of them selected the traditional roles of males and females. So the men said they were assertive, they said they were self reliant. Um, strong, things like that, and females typically said they were caring, um, emotional, things like that. 36% of them selected the blended or androgynous role. So some males said uh, they were emotional, they were you know, caring, and females might have said they were assertive or self-reliant. And 15% of them selected the opposite sex role. So again, women saying that you know they selected all the male roles and men selecting all the female roles. So this was an interesting study she did. During later studies, Beam discovered that those who selected androgynous roles were more flexible. So those people who kind of picked the blended roles of, uh, yeah, I'm strong as a man, but I'm also emotional, uh, those types of people were more flexible. They were also uh, able to express playfulness, concern, and warmth. So her main conclusion here, she argued that androgynous roles should be ideal. So we should be putting more emphasis on these blended roles of men and women in society uh, and there should be no artificial roles between men and women. So we shouldn't be dividing those roles. This is strictly a male role. This is strictly a female role. So the idea of androgyny, excuse me, the idea of androgyny is becoming more of a universal idea. Um, the problem with this is, and one of the challenges this causes for especially adolescents is they face more options on how to define themselves. Um, and this creates more greater responsibility in some cases. So younger people are forced to face new roles and challenge them. So again, typically a, a teenage boy would understand what his role is as a male or a te teenage girl would understand what her role as a female was. But with these new blended roles for men and women, yes, they're good. Um, it's good to have those blended roles in society. But for teenagers who are already going through a conflicting time in their lives, it's very confusing, you know, for a teenage boy to say, okay, should I be a strong man and not show emotion or should I you know, show my emotion when I'm upset, you know, same with a teenage girl, you know, should I be caring and understanding or should I be more assertive and make sure I get what I want? So this is a challenge for teenagers to try and figure out their gender roles uh, in society today. And also older people may not be so accepting of new blended roles. Um, you know, many times, you know, older people or elderly people may be set in the time from, you know, the man went to work and made the money, the woman stayed home and took care of the kids. So many of them sometimes are not willing to accept some of these newer roles that are coming into society today. Okay, so wrapping up here with our closure, again, remember to include this in your weekly summary. Do your best to answer it. How do gender roles and gender identity affect teenagers? Think about some of the challenges and conflict teenagers can face in terms of gender roles and gender identity, and how does this impact their uh, behavior and their personality as well. All right, hope you have a great rest of your day or night, and hope to talk to you soon.